Hey babies and gentlemen and welcome to the DAC. In today's video I'll try to explain a little bit about an aspect of desire utilitarianism that people generally tend not to understand. Specifically, I tend to receive some some uh, objections or some questions, some resistance uh, in people that um, think that desire utilitarianism is like saying that there is some sort of rule of morality that says that desire fulfillment is important. So they ask, why should we aim to fulfill desires or whatever? Why should we? So um, I'm, I want to try to explain that it doesn't say anything of that. It states that as a matter of fact and desires as the only reasons for action that people have. So it's not a matter of you say to sat satisfying or you sh or you ought uh, of that or that you ought to fulfill. It's it's uh, a fact that you always do. You always act in a in a manner as to fulfill the most and the strongest of your desires. So um, that's correct. If you do this sort of objection, like uh, why does fulfillment of desire matter? All I can say it it doesn't it doesn't matter, and you're also asking the wrong question. There is no such thing, no entity or law of nature or reason, which declares that the fulfillment of desires is what matters. Desire utilitarianism is not a theory that declares that desire fulfillment matters. Instead, what it says that if a desires that P, say it again, if A, let's say me, desires that P, proposition, whatever proposition, then for every state of affairs S, whether P is true, in S matters to A. P is what matters, or more specifically, P is true, is what matters. And in this example, it only matters to A, to the degree that A desires that P, and P is true in S. Then A has a motivating reason to act to realize S. Desire fulfillment is a term that I use to describe a state in which A desires that P, and P is true. In other words, I have a desire of some proposition and there is a state of affairs in which that proposition is true. In that state of affairs I have a fulfilled desire. Okay. Now what would ta it take for A desires that P and P is true to matter? Specifically it would matter to B if B had a desire that Q and Q is true in A desires that P and P is true. In this case, desire fulfillment would matter, but it would only matter to B, and only insofar as B has a desire that Q. However, A's desire that P gives P a motivating reason to realize states of affairs in which P is true. A is not, in this case, seeking desire fulfillment. A is seeking P. That is to say that A has a motivating reason to organize things in the universe in such a way as to um, make P true or to keep it true. It's very random. One of the things that A can do to create or preserve a state of affairs in which P is true is to manipulate the desires of other people. This further implies that, to the degree that he can influence whatever desires other people has, he has a motivating reason to cause them to have desires that would bring about states of affairs in which P is true. Again, A is not doing this because he seeks desire fulfillment, or because desire fulfillment is what matters. He is doing this because he seeks to make or keep the proposition P true and P is true in state of affairs S. To the degree that B 
seeks to make or keep Q true, B has reason to promote in A those desires that will cause A to act in ways that make or keep Q true. This could invoke, I mean, this could involve giving A a desire that Q. It could involve giving A a desire that R, that where R causes Q, or at least makes Q more likely. If we look at all of the reasons for action that exist, we will discover that there are some malleable desires that people generally have a great many strong reasons to promote, and desires that people generally have many strong reasons to inhibit. None of this requires anybody to put any value in desire fulfillment itself. All of this could still be true and accurate even if absolutely nobody cared about desire fulfillment per se. That is to say, all of this would still make sense even if desire fulfillment per se did not matter to even one individual. So the objection that I always face is actually an objection that I do not have to answer. The objection is, hey Sal, I want to hear your proof that desire fulfillment is what matters. The person raising the objection then asserts, implicitly or explicitly, that since I can offer no proof that desire fulfillment is what matters, then he has therefore disproved desire utilitarianism and can then move on. What the person raising this objection does not understand is that desire utilitarianism denies that desire fulfillment is what matters. What matters are those things that are the objects of desires the proposition P that one finds in his desire that P. So it is not an objection to desire utilitarianism that I have no argument to defend the proposition. Why does the fulfillment of desires matter? It is not an objection to a theory that it cannot do what it says cannot be done. So think about it. Send me your comments, suggestions. As always, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to get smarter. See you all in the next video. Bye.